those initial results that we got were results that I've never seen before for that water. Discovery with the pure, purified water is quite, quite startling. So I'll describe a little bit about what this instrumentation does because probably you're wondering about that by now. <laughs> uh, basically, what in water quality labs, the government, EPA, and other government agencies test water. And per, for instance, a municipality that has a water treatment plant or they provide water to clients in, in their town, they have to, uh, they have certain standards for the quality of that water. So there are various dissolved constituents which have to be within certain limits. And so they measure those. And one of the things they measure is the particulate content. So if you take water out of a stream, it can be kind of muddy and it can have color to it. And uh, they don't like that for drinking water. So they've, the government's established standards and the federal government has standards for drinking water regarding to the number of particles that, that, that are in it. So they don't, they don't like uh, drinking water to be so muddy that you, know, you can't even see through it. So they've come up with a method to measure how much particulate matter is in the water. And they do that by this method of shining light through the water to see if the light scatters. So there's many different kinds of particles that can be in the water, and this method basically measures all of them because that's what these particles scatter the light. And whatever light is scattered and is measured by this instrumentation. So there, this is the mystery then. The mystery is you can take pure water that has nothing in it. It doesn't even have anything dissolved in it. So not only does it have no particles in it that can scatter light, it has nothing dissolved in it that can be measured by other techniques. So it's pretty strange that the water starts scattering light. So. That was the first discovery that this was actually happening on waters of various kinds. The question then is, what is it that's actually scattering the light in these, in these solutions? And uh, I mean, I'm grateful to Jim to bringing this issue to me because I had never had any idea that this was, could be possible. And he saw that and he just called me out of the blue one day and asked me if I knew anything about that. And I had him describe to me what in the world he was doing. And I had no idea what was going on. This shouldn't happen. You shouldn't this see the arrowhead water that he uses as a stock solution. It's a drinking water that is regulated by the government and it has to adhere to certain standards. So one of those standards is this low particulate content. So they have to filter their water to some degree to take out enough particles that it, uh, it satisfies the government standards. So in, indeed, you can measure their water and it's a good, a good low standard. It has very little in it. So when he's telling me that he's getting this effect from his water, it just made no sense. So. I thought, well, it's probably worth looking into. So that's when I researched it and I bought this instrument and started making measurements of my own. One day shook the sample a little bit and I realized that it was a bigger effect I was seeing. So then I came up with a protocol for actually inverting the sample. And uh, every time I saw an increased effect. So that's the next mystery is what's going on there. Uh, you've. There are no particles to begin with. So one might think that if there were particles, that if you turned it over, that you'd suspend the particles and they would scatter the light better. I mean, that's the first thing I thought of. But there were no particles. And I could prove that by doing uh, something called centrifugation. If you put uh, water with suspended particles on it in a centrifuge and spin it around, particles all go to the bottom of the centrifuge and you remove them. 
So I tried to, if they were actual physical particles, you should be able to remove them by using a centrifuge and I never saw that. I could never, no particles were ever removed. I didn't see the effect go away, in other words, when I centrifuged the sample. So it's more than just particles, but then what is it? Well, the way this instrument works, uh, it, it sees, it, it detects light. So a beam is sent through the sample and there's a sensor at 90 degrees at right angles to the beam. So if any light is scattered, the sensor will pick it up. So normally if no light is scattered, it just goes straight through and you get no readings. But what would happen if the uh, sample was actually emitting light itself? The instrument would have no way of uh, differentiating between light that was scattered and light that was actually emitted by the sample. So this is another area for research because it's possible that whatever energy has been in, in, imbued in these samples is actually possible. It's possible to have the sample emit light afterwards. And it's possible also that this mechanical process is uh, producing that effect. So there are a lot of possibilities here that need to be uh, looked into. <laughs> As you can tell, we've just barely started on this. I mean, it's barely a year that uh, uh, Jim called me. So it's pretty new research. And as you can surmise, I mean, this experience coming here today was a, a, another step in the direction of developing more questions. <laughs>